Here we are out in Hollister Hills on Monday. Totally empty. It's amazing. Um, anyway, I thought I'd come out here and check out the WR. Kind of a interesting bike. Not quite sure why I bought it. Um, predominantly, predominantly because it had a plate on it. Um, and so I went ahead and tore it apart and tried to get it as light as possible get it to be uh, a little more dirt friendly and uh, this is the first time I've taken it out on dirt it runs great on the street I've gone with some pretty low gearing um, so I would say that so far so good um, power is actually surprising it uh, will do anything that you need it to do in fact uh, it'll come out of some turns pretty good if you're slipping the clutch um, one thing for sure it's definitely slower at handling than my uh, 350 Husky. Um, almost took a shit. <laughs> Went off the trail right off the bat. Um, just got past a tree. Um, I was expecting it to turn like my Husky, but it doesn't. But you know what? You learn how to ride bikes in just different manners. They all have their own characteristics. So far, I'm pretty stoked on the way that this thing's turned out. The bike is a 2008 WR250R I picked up in the Bay Area. So I took her down to click suspension. There, Mike Marquez had experience working on these bikes and did a great job sorting out the issues. The FMF Q4 slip-on is lighter, sounds better, but I'm not certain if it actually does anything beyond that. I also added an IMS fuel tank. I believe it's a three gallon. The larger IMS seemed a bit too bulky. The 1 and 8 arrow bars have a comfortable bend, but the stock WR clamps only work for smaller bar sizes. The Zeta clamp fixed the issue and looks pretty clean. Stock gearing on the bike was terrible off-road, so after a bit of research, I opted for a 1452 combo. This is perfect for my liking. I had no issues with uphill trails or coming out of corners on the dirt. And on the pavement, I'm still capable of 65 to 70 miles an hour, which is way faster than I ever want to go on dirt bike tires. The Magura hydraulic clutch was a game changer. It transformed the feel of this bike in more than one way. What once felt like an old XR400 clutch, it now resembles my 2016 350 Husky. Great feedback and easy to install, worth every penny in my book. Some simple mods gave this bike some great power. The air box flapper was removed and I sealed the hole on top of the box to direct the air better. I also drilled out and filtered the holes in the access door for additional airflow. Combined with the fuel injection module, it made the bike truly come alive at every level of the power band. Some small things were also added, such as a radiator guard, uh, going with Polysport LED headlight, LED rear tail light, and blinkers, and front LEDs that are integrated into the hand guards. Other details were the frame mods, where I cut every tab that was no longer needed, and I even reconstructed the rear fender mounts to lighten up the subframe where I could. I added a set of Kenda 760 Enduro tires, which I run currently on my Husky. They've worked great so far. There were five things that really made a difference on this bike. Suspension, without the proper setup, the bike will always suffer and it won't be fun to ride. The airbox modification with the fuel control is all you need for this bike. It's a perfect increase in grunt. Gearing adjustment. I ran a 1452 combination and it seems perfect. Stainless steel brake lines. There was a major difference in feel and stopping power. And of course the Magura clutch kit. Hands down the most impressive mod I've done. So if you have any specific questions about how I approached this project or the parts I used, please shoot me a line and I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, See you in the dirt.
and this is why you ride on a Monday and not the weekend. It's completely empty here.